Welcome to Synapse 101, a short dose of neurological teaching for your daily rounds. Today, we will discuss how to read a brain MRI stroke protocol. MRI brain for stroke is more time-consuming than CT brain. CT brain can be completed in a matter of 5 to 10 minutes, while MRI brain will take 20 to 30 minutes depending on the patient's cooperation. Somehow, the other limitation of other institutions is that they may not even have an MRI machine. However, we can't emphasize enough that MRI has significantly higher specificity and sensitivity in recognizing acute ischemic infarction in the first few hours after the onset of stroke symptoms. When interpreting a MRI, one should correlate the clinical syndrome with that of the MRI findings. In acute ischemic stroke, there is a cytotoxic edema going on in the neurons. Imaging techniques were developed to recognize these areas early. This is important in terms of hyperacute treatment of revascularization and prognosis. Diffusion-weighted imaging or DWI provides image contrast that is dependent on the molecular motion of water. DWI is the most sensitive method to date to detect ischemia in the hyperacute stage. However, it should be remembered that DWI lesions can be at least partially reversible in the very early phase of ischemia and the size of the DWI abnormality does not necessarily reflect irreversibly damaged tissue. Within minutes of arterial occlusion, there is an increased DWI signal and a reduced ADC value. ADC stands for Apparent Diffusion Coefficient. This correlates well with infarct core. During the first week, the infarcted parenchyma continues to demonstrate high DWI signal and low ADC signal. Although, by the end of the first week, ADC values have started to increase. Another important sequence is the gradient recalled echo. GRE can detect a hemorrhagic lesion. So, in the light of an ischemic stroke, for example, one can determine if there is a hemorrhagic conversion by looking at the GRE sequence. Moreover, Microbleeds or a small hemosiderin deposits not apparent on CT brain can be detected in GRE images. MR angiography is particularly useful in the detection of vascular occlusion or stenosis in patients with ischemic stroke. One should know the blood supply of the brain and its respective territory to clinically correlate. Cellular energy failure leads to cytotoxic edema, meaning more intracellular water. DWI can detect changes suggesting ischemic stroke as early as few minutes to six hours after onset of symptoms. There are a few salient features of DWI sequence. Number one, it is a rapid sequence. There are less artifacts. Number two, it correlates well with infarct core. It can differentiate acute from a chronic ischemic stroke. A signal intensity is lowest on diffusion-weighted images 3 to 4 days after infarction and persists for about 10 to 14 days longer than that seen at ADC mapping. A high signal on DWI does not necessarily mean acute lesion since DWI is affected by T2 effects of basogenic edema in chronic infarcts. These are called T2 shine through. And lastly, it should be correlated with ADC. This is a patient who presented with an acute onset of left-sided weakness. There is a DWI hyperintensity in the right putamen extending to the right corona radiata.
A good rule of thumb is that if the signal intensity on ADC map is low, the stroke is less than one week old. In this video, I put the DWI side by side with the ADC sequence showing a DWI hyperintensity with corresponding restricted diffusion in ADC map compatible with an acute infarction over the right putamen extending to the right corona radiata. Gradient echo or GRE and susceptibility weighted image or SWI sequences are the most sensitive sequences for depicting hemorrhagic transformation in patients with ischemic stroke. Hemorrhagic transformation is rare in the first 12 hours after stroke onset, particularly within the first 6 hours. When it occurs, it is usually within the first 24 to 48 hours and in almost all cases is present 4 to 5 days after a big stroke. This sequence is very sensitive to flow and hence are used for MRA. The image on the left is the DWI sequence and on the right is the GRE. Concentrate on the region of interest, which is the right pitaminal infarct. I usually tell my students that if you see anything dark within the area or region of infarction in GRE, this may suggest hemorrhagic transformation. So in this video, the GRE on the right did not show any hemorrhagic transformation. MR angiography may demonstrate luminal diameter, occlusion, or stenosis. In interpreting the MRA, one must correlate the site of infarction and its corresponding blood supply. Just like for the earlier case, the right putamen is supplied by the anterior circulation, particularly the middle cerebral artery. In conclusion for this particular case, the interpretation is as follows. There is a DWI hyperintensity over the right putamen extending to the right corona radiata with corresponding restricted diffusion in ADC map, compatible with an acute infarct at the right putamen corona radiata without hemorrhagic conversion and without evidence of large vessel occlusion. So now let us practice. There is this case, a 40-year-old gentleman, a chronic smoker with hypertension and presented with a sudden onset of left-sided weakness and progressed to locked-in syndrome two days later. So here is your DWI sequence on the left and the ADC map on the right. All right. So, there are DWI hyperintensities with corresponding ADC restriction that may suggest acute infarcts over the right hemipons and extending to the left ventral pons. There are also signals um, in the right and left cerebellar hemisphere but more on the left and uh, left lateral thalamus, left inferior temporal region which are all um, over the left PCA territory. So all these areas that I've mentioned are all in the posterior circulation, isn't it? Involving the brainstem and pons in particular and your bilateral cerebellar hemisphere and the PCA territory. So if you imagine the blood supply, even before you open the MRA, the culprit vessel may have involved significantly the basilar artery which supplies the pons mainly and has branches supplying the cerebellum like the ICA or anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the superior cerebellar artery. Um, as you continue superiorly, basilar artery will bifurcate as the two PCA supplying the thalamus, midbrain and inferior temporal lobe and ends um, with the occipital lobe. So lo and behold, your suspicion is correct. There is a mid basilar artery stenosis. But what can we hypothesize on what happened to this case is that um, perhaps uh, 
a plaque ruptured from the basilar artery and traveled up to the left PCA. But of course, um, we cannot totally rule out a cardioembolic source.